Amen. Praise the Lord. If you would, please turn with me in your Bible to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17. Jeremiah, chapter 17. And I want to take for a title this morning, What is Your Truth? What is Your Truth? Uh, I suppose about half a decade ago, we began to hear this phrase, Your Truth. Um, and the idea is that every person has their own truth to tell. They have their own, uh, what they consider to be their truth that, that, that they can give to the conversation. And now you're seeing it become very pervasive that even newscasters and some of the talking heads on television will say, well, this person is going to be our guest. He's going to share with us his truth. And there can be no such thing as your truth. There is the truth. That is the truth no matter who is involved in looking at it, but there cannot be a truth that is with respect or relative to the person who is sharing it. If there is a truth, for example, when you look up, there's a sky above our head. That's not my truth. That's all of our truths. When you walk, you walk on, uh, on, on a surface that's, that's attached to the earth. That, that's, not, that's not your truth, that's all of our truths. And for truth to be truth, it has to be uh, universal. If it's just this person's truth or that person's truth, it's just a perspective. It's not truth at all. Here is why I want to share with you this morning why you and I cannot have our personal truth. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says this, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Let's pray. Father, I come to you this morning, Lord, thanking you for the word of God, thanking you for the rebuke, Lord, that you give me, that you give to the entire body of Christ because it lets us know that we are sons and not illegitimate children. Now, Father, this morning, I ask you to anoint your word. Give me to speak openly and clearly to the hearts of your people. And Father, help me to sow seeds in the heart this morning that choke out the tares that the enemy is trying to plant within our hearts and our society. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. Jeremiah says, and I can confirm that the heart is deceitful above all things. How many can say amen to Jeremiah? <laughs> it's desperately wicked. There's no way that my heart can discern just my truth because my heart is so corrupt, I only see my perspective or I only project my opinion rather than what is truly truth. And we're living in a time now that everyone is chiming in what their truth is or what they perceive truth to be. And I say to you this morning, there is but one truth. It's a man named Jesus Christ. He said, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. There is no other. This Bible is truth. What's in it is absolute, inerrant truth. Everything else is simply a perspective, an estimation, a guess based on man's own intelligence. But the problem with man's intelligence is that the heart of man is desperately wicked. It is deceitful. Our own hearts will deceive us. And now, I'm not talking this morning about people out in the world. We know they're deceived. I'm talking about us, the body of Christ. We have to make sure that we have the sincere truth of God abiding in our hearts. Otherwise, we'll believe, we'll think, we'll react, we'll respond exactly the same way that the world does. Our hearts are deceitful. They're deceitful. Now, the wicked man cannot even, he can't even discern that his heart is wicked. Hence him saying that this is my truth. He can't discern the difference. But you and I who are exposed to the word of God, who have the spirit of God in us, I know when I'm wrong. And I tell God, what, Lord, what I was just thinking, that's wrong. That's not consistent. I, I, I'll just share with you. I, I struggle sometimes with this. I struggle sometimes as I see our nation being disintegrated. As I, see, as I see things that have been stables all of my life, and I think within my own mind, Lord, if I, I, I can straighten this whole mess out, just it'll take about one week. <laughs> 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 and 
And then I have to catch myself. If God hadn't straightened it out in one week, who am I? And I have to, I have to repent and say, God, that, that was not your spirit. That was not your heart. And so we have to be careful when we try to define what is our truth because we have to realize our hearts, they're desperately wicked. Now, uh, in, the, in the book of Matthew, and don't, don't turn to this, I'm just going to read it. Here's something that Peter shared. And, and let me say this. Peter was a man of God. He loved Jesus Christ. He was a Christian. He wrote part of the New Testament. He, he was not just a weak cistern somewhere. But here's what Peter said. Peter answered the Lord one time and said, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. That was his truth. But it turned out to be a lie. And even Jesus, who is the word himself, he said, No, Peter, this very night you're going to be offended. But Peter said, no, no, my truth is that I'll never be offended. But our truth, based on the wickedness of the human heart, will often turn out to be nothing more than a deception. Peter had deceived his own heart. He believed that he would never be offended. The heart is desperately wicked. Listen, you cannot trust yourself. I'll say it on this side. You can't trust yourself. How many times do you say, God, I'll never do that again? <laughs> you can't trust yourself. You can't trust yourself to project what is truth outside of the written word of God. In Luke chapter 9, verse 51, it says this, It came to pass when the time was come that he, speaking of Jesus, should be received up. In other words, Jesus is going to Jerusalem to, to be crucified. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into the village of the Samaritans. Now, let me explain the Samaritans. The Jews were, you were a Jew if your father was a Jew. That would make you Jewish. The Samaritans, they had mixed with other races of people, and hence they were part Jew, but they were some part not Jew, so they were called Samaritans. And there was an ethnic hatred. Have you read about that in the news lately? There was an ethnic hatred between the Jews and the Samaritans. And so it says that um, they entered into a village of the Samaritans for to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. In other words, there was ethnic strife. There was ethnic strife. The Samaritans, oh, or the, you Jews are going to Jerusalem, you can't stay here. And saints, there's no way if you're going to live this life, there are going to be times that you are involved in strife. There are going to be times. Everybody's not going to love you. I don't care what color you are. Everybody's not going to love you. You can be the same color as the person who hates you. <laughs> I said, whatever color you are, there's people that are your color that don't like you. There was ethnic strife. So it says, and when his disciples, James and John, now these are men of God. These are not, these are not backsliders. These are not uh, heathen. James and John saw this. They said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Even as Elias did. <laughs> How many ever just thought that a few strategically placed deaths would clear a lot of stuff up? <laughs> they went to Jesus himself. Listen, they deceived their own heart. They thought it was okay. They went to Jesus himself and said, Lord, how about we just call that fire? Let's just burn these devils up. Let's just burn them up. Listen, we got Bible. Elijah did it. It's in the word of God. Let's just burn them up. Their hearts deceived them. Saints, the same thing can happen to you and I. Let me say this to you. I don't care what your situation is. Walk soft before God. Walk soft. I mean, stay rooted and grounded. Stay dogmatically rooted and grounded in the things of God, but walk soft in your expression. Lord, will thou that we command fire? They're asking Jesus for permission to burn up their fellow man. Yeah. And consume them even as Elias did. Now, what they're doing, and saints, we see this, you can see it on Twitter, you can see it on Instagram, you can see it on many of the news forums. They are using the Bible to cover their ethnic hatred. 
They are using, they attempted to use the, the writings of Elias, Elijah, to, to cover, to give cover to their ethnic hatred. And the same thing is happening in our nation right now. Don't let your heart deceive you. But he turned, but he, Jesus turned after they asked this, and he rebuked them. And sometimes we need a good rebuke, don't we? I know I do. Sometimes I need the Lord to help me to, to stay on the line. Because it's easy to get emotional and get off the line. And you guys say, God, get me back on the line. He rebuked them and said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. Now think about that phrase. Jesus is telling his disciples, these are men of God that are doing the work of God. He's saying, you don't understand. You've deceived yourself. You don't know what spirit you're of. You think you're walking in the spirit that's consistent with the Lord, but in fact you're not. You've been rebuked by Jesus himself. And we have to be very careful, always realizing, no matter how emotional you are, it does not heal your desperately wicked heart. And you have a great capacity, as do I, to deceive myself. That's why no matter what, I always come back to the word of God. I do it several times a day. I meditate upon the word and I consider my actions. I consider my attitudes. Most importantly, I consider my words. Because how many know some words can come, some, you can say words that, I'm not talking about cuss words, words that conceptually are not correct. You have the wrong idea. You have the wrong thought. Because I, I, I sometimes think that, well, you know, if we just wipe out half of the house and a third of the Senate... When I say wipe out, I mean do away with. I mean call down fire. <laughs> it would straighten things up, but I have to, I have to rebuke myself. That's not, that's not the will or the way of God. In fact, he says it right here. He said, you know not what manner of your spirit you are of because the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. He said, what, what I'm doing, the whole work of the cross, the whole work of Calvary was not to destroy men. It was to save men's souls. I had a discussion this past week with my daughter. And we were talking about, um, uh, you know, bearing arms. I, I'm a gun guy. I, I like guns and I, I have a few of them. Uh, and, and we were talking about, I was sharing with her that the highest aspiration in my life is to leave this planet having never hurt anybody. That, that's my heart. That's what I want. But if you come at Sister Lincoln, I, I'll smoke you. That's my responsibility. And, and we were just sharing about that. And, and my, wife, uh, my, my daughter made a, a statement that was so powerful. Because many times people boast themselves in their willingness to kill somebody else. And if a Christian is in a position that you have to pull the trigger, you didn't just kill that person. You sent them straight to hell. You made the decision, this person leaves earth right now and goes straight to hell. Because most likely, if you have to shoot somebody, they're not a Christian. <laughs> it, it, I would hope. I would hope Christians aren't killing Christians. And so, so it's very important to realize that the purpose of Jesus Christ coming to this planet was not to destroy or eliminate men's lives. It was to save men's lives. And here's the last verse. Now, they had this big, uh, this big situation, but the last phrase says, and they went to another village. What a simple answer that is. <laughs> we could call down fire and we can burn all these devils up, or we could just go to the next village. You know, sometimes we allow ourselves to get caught up in a bunch of things, and there's a simple solution. Just log off of your Twitter account. Just log off. <laughs> and they just uninstall it. I mean, it's, it's almost worthless now. And, and many of the social platforms unfriend some people. If they're bringing a bunch of hate to your stream, unfriend them. My Instagram account, I got an account from China. It's Mama Gorilla with Baby Gorilla. I've got a few puppy dog streams, you know, some cat streams, just some nice things to help mellow me out. <laughs> Amen. And, it, and if, it's, if, it's not, if it's not, if it's not good, if, if it's not proper, if, if, it's, if it doesn't edify, why do you have it in your life? Because it is 
pushing you in a direction that may not be God's and your heart is so desperately wicked you can walk halfway down that road before you realize I'm wrong like two left shoes. I'm totally wrong. Here's what Luke said in uh, Luke chapter 6 if you would just go back three chapters. Now remember that this desperately wicked heart that's within us and, may, and stays within us even after you're born again, that doesn't put you in sinless perfection. You still have the capacity to do great evil. But this desperately wicked heart, when it first begins to express itself, it does so through the tongue. It comes through the tongue. Luke says in chapter 6, verse 45, it says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. How does he do that? He speaks it. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. Because of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Many times you can listen to your own words and you can see the condition of your own heart. And listen, I'm going to give you a secret. When your words are coming out and they're emotional, you better check your heart right there. You're already in trouble. Because your emotion, it, 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 is, it comes from a deceptive heart. And sometimes your position might not be wrong, but what you're, the way you're expressing it, the way you think about it, is what's wrong. And I think even today, Jesus will say to many of us, you don't know what spirit you're of. You have no idea what spirit you're of. We deceive ourselves so easily. This is not part of my message, but I'm going to say it. Please turn off the news. Please turn off the news. Go buy a newspaper. Read it. If you need a good one, don't, don't get a left or a right. Don't get Fox News. Don't get CNN. Get one that's in the middle. Go see can you find a Walter Cronkite newspaper. <laughs> Just old school, just tell me what happened. I know how to think about what I read. Just tell me, don't tell me what to think, tell, just tell me what happened. Because we're allowing now those who speak to the nation to stir up so much stuff in us. And again, if you're emotional about it, you probably don't know what spirit you're of. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says this, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. If we would judge ourselves. Meaning if we would listen to the words that come from our mouth and judge them. If we would listen to the, look at the attitudes of our heart and judge them. And when I say judge them, I mean condemn them. I, I, I don't mean to, to certify them. I mean look at the attitudes, find that attitude is not wrong and condemn it. God, this is not your spirit. This is not right. What I just thought, what I just said, God, that's not your spirit. Convict me so I don't walk in that mode. This is a time like no other. The pot is being stirred in America. The pot is being stirred. And you can't tell me, oh, brother, nothing, no, no, none of this is bothering you. Listen, you've deceived yourself. You cannot listen to everything that's happening in the nation and think you're not impacted. You're not that strong. Even though your wicked heart has told you you are, you're not. You need, to, you need to turn off some of the external and you need to get into what is spiritual. And the spiritual will tell you that what you're thinking concerning the external, all of it is not right. You may have some things right. I got some things right, but all of it is not right. There's some things that the Lord, is, he's got to let things play out the way that they play out. I'm thinking, Lord, how about we do a quick work and cut it off in righteousness? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking all the time, Lord, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Well, God's got a time. He didn't ask me for my input. He told me to be faithful till he comes. He didn't ask me to pick and choose who should go in or who should go out. That's not my position. That's his position. He's the master. And, me, and here's something else. He didn't tell me what color is right or what color is wrong or what person is right or what person is wrong or what person will come into salvation or what person can't come into salvation. God didn't tell me to just, none of that is my call. All of that is his. My job is to hold to the truth and when I speak, speak the truth and not my truth. Man, that's good preaching. That's good preaching. 
if we would judge ourselves, if we would condemn ourselves rather than justify ourselves, man, that's good. <laughs> if we would consider our attitude, our words, and our actions, and if we as maturing Christians would condemn our own selves rather than consistently justify ourselves, we should not be judged of the Lord. You hear what I'm saying? If we, would, if we would judge ourselves and say, God, what I just thought or what I just said, that was wrong. Then Jesus don't have to come to you and tell you, you're wrong. I rebuke you because you've already judged yourself. Listen, I, I'm like this. I, 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 I don't care what's wrong or what's right. I just want to know what's right. And here's where you find that out. This is where you find out. This book has specific judgment, uh, specific instructions how we can walk through this time of judgment in the nation. As the world, as you know, Jesus said in the end days, he said, nation will rise up against nation. You ever read that? I think it's Matthew 24. The word nation in that scripture is ethnos in the Greek. It's where we get our modern word ethnicity from. In other words, he wasn't talking about this uh, nation rising up against this nation. He was saying one race will rise up against another race. It's in your Bible. Read it. He said that's going to come before the end. But here's what else is in your Bible. There's no middle wall of partition. Amen. There's no middle wall of partition. God has opened the door wide and said, whosoever will come unto me. It doesn't matter the color. doesn't matter the ethnicity. doesn't matter the political persuasion. He's opened the door wide. You know, you're quiet this morning, but that's good preaching. Turn your social streams off. If it's putting hatred in your heart, turn it off. Because you're not that strong that you can stand up against it. See, Jesus didn't say he expected you to know what's right. He does. He expects you to do what's right. And if what you're digesting prevents you from doing what is right, you may have a rebuke. You may have a rebuke coming. Or we deceive ourselves so easily. So easily we, we deceive ourselves and it's not until we've made a fool of ourselves that we realize, man, I've been deceived the whole time. Now you've got to turn it around and go back the other way, if you will. Mark chapter 8 verse 31 says this, And he, speaking of Jesus, began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and of the scribes and be killed. And after three days rise again. And he spake that saying openly. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Peter heard Jesus teaching on his upcoming crucifixion and Peter said, no, not so, Lord, far be it from you. Now, the reason he said it is he, he wasn't that concerned so much about his, his real heart was we have put all our hope and you throwing down the powers of Rome and you rising up the kingdom of God. And I've got, a, I've got a chief position in your administration. He had ulterior motives. He was looking for his own benefit. But yet he had deceived himself into thinking that he had a real legitimate concern about the Lord Jesus Christ. Saints, we have Peter's a good man. He's not a weak sister and he's a good man. He loved the Lord probably more than most of us in this room right now. But yet he was still able to deceive his heart, his own heart. And we see that because, but when he had turned about and looked on his disciples. Now, that's an important statement. So Peter makes this statement, far be it from you. It's in another one of the gospels. Far be it from you, Lord. It's not, that's not going to happen. Jesus turned around. He looked at all 12 of them to make sure that they were taking in the moment. Then he rebuked Peter to his face. It was a public rebuke. I like mine private. <laughs> but it was a public rebuke. Listen, you can deceive yourself to the point that a public rebuke becomes necessary. Especially if you have made public statements that hurt people. A public rebuke will become necessary. But he rebuked Peter saying, get thee behind me, Satan. That's a strong rebuke. He loved God. He's one of the 12 most holy men on the planet in terms of his knowledge. But Jesus looks right around and says, you devil. Peter, you devil. To his face. Get behind me. You are an offense to me. 
is what the, the phraseology means. He says, because thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. The word savorest, it means you have set your affections on. Your mind is exercised concerning the things that be of men, meaning that Peter was thinking about his position in the kingdom of God. He'd be a chief administrator. He'd have, he'd have a, a prestigious position. And Jesus is telling them, no, you've deceived yourself. Your, your heart is not right. You're not even thinking about the kingdom of God. You're not even thinking about, you, you've not set your mind on the things of God. Oh, saints, you and I in this time, listen, we're going to be exercised in the, in the short years to come. We're going to be greatly exercised. Perilous times are upon us. I just read last week a large statue of Jesus in Florida. It was not only pulled down, the head was chopped off. That's in our nation. That's coming. Now, I'm, I'm, it's in Florida right now. We used to see it all over across the water. <laughs> now it's here. And it's coming to your neighborhood soon. You are going to be hated of all men for Jesus' name's sake. That's what the Bible, you might as well get ready for that. And if we can't be hated and reviled for what we stand for and still keep a good demeanor, then, then we're, we're not where we need to be. Think about the Hebrew boys. They're looking the king face to face. The furnace is right there. And the king is saying, I'm going to throw you little brats in there right now. And they stood their ground, but go back and read it. Not one derogatory term ever came out of their mouth. Even at the point of death, they treated the king with the greatest respect. Both going in the fire and coming out, it was the greatest respect that they exuded. That's a mature child of God. That's where you and I, and if you, if you blow up over a comment on your Twitter stream, if you blow up because somebody has said something that doesn't appeal to your political discernment, how in the world are you going to stand when the real fire comes? These hearts are desperately wicked. I, musicians, would you please come back? I would ask you to get into the Word of God as never before. Because you are going to be tested as never before. As never before. I've made the decision. I'm just as frail as anybody in this room, but I have made the decision. No matter what comes, if they close the doors to the church, if they throw me in jail for preaching the gospel, no matter what comes, with all that in me is, I will be a man of God till the very end. Till the very last breath, I want to be a man of God. Get that in your spirit. You want to be a man of God. You want to be a woman of God, no matter what comes. You want to walk with Jesus. The heart is deceitful above all things. It's desperately wicked. Exercise yourself in the word of God. Amen. Would you bow your heads all over the room? Father, I thank you this morning. Lord, for that that you've given us as, as the body of Christ, the words of instruction that you give us, the words of rebuke, the words of correction, is, Lord, because you love us and because you want to conform us to the image <laughs> of your Son. God, what a privilege. What a privilege to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. We come to you right now, Lord. And we ask you to strengthen us with might. Help us not to deceive ourselves into thinking that we're plenty strong. Help us, oh God, not to deceive ourselves into thinking we have need of nothing, that we sit as a queen. Help us this morning. Lay your convicting power upon our hearts right now. Would you stand, please, all over the room? If you're able this morning, would you stand? And I need you to reach out for yourself. God hears my prayer, but he hears your prayer for your life and your soul. Father, just move right now. We ask you to rain down Holy Ghost conviction upon every heart. Help us, Lord, in our weak areas, in the areas that we've deceived ourselves. Bring your light in. Shine it upon our lives. Shine it upon our hearts. Lord, if we walk crossways to the truths of God, let us do so knowing that it's a crossways walk. Father, we just come to you right now. Come on all over the room. Why don't you reach out and just ask the Lord, help me this morning. Help me this morning. I don't, I don't want my heart to deceive me. I don't want my life to be lived out in desperate wickedness. God, I want to know you.
And I want to walk in your way. Just reach out. Amen. You know, as we get closer to God and the brighter his light shines on us, the more we see how unworthy we are. But I'm so thankful that, you know, we talked about that loving God, that he does correct us, but he gives us a gentle rebuke. And if we'll only listen and if we'll only follow, he'll get us closer and closer to him. I'm so thankful that in a time of uncertainty that we're holding on to the master's hand. Such a good word this morning. We want to thank you all for uh, coming out. Uh, we want to thank those of you who have joined us uh, through the webcast. Uh, we want to remind you to stay safe. Uh, those that are in-house here, uh, we'll dismiss in groups of two. We ask you as you go into the lobby that uh, to remember social distance. And if you can't social distance, we would ask that you would uh, wear your mask this morning. So um, at this time, uh, we'd ask this side of the room to, if you'll just... <laughs> Thank you for watching and please subscribe. You can also find more of our videos in our archives at ChristUnveiled.org. We'll see you next time.